Chair? I understand that, uh, Mr. Chair, that the minister uh, has been in the media saying that he is going to allocate uh, more than $10 million in uh, what he's calling transition funding in relation to that ESL program cut. Um, I wonder if the minister uh, could explain where in this budget that money is coming from. Minister. Mr. Chair, the uh, Ministry has secured one-time funding in the amount of $10.5 million in fiscal 2013-2014 uh, to provide uh, for institutions transition their programs uh, in an environment where the federal government uh, funds the, the bulk of immigrant settler services. Uh, that, that funding came from the Labour Market Development Agreement. Member Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So that funding, uh, Mr. Chair, is then coming from the federal government, is that correct? Minister. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, can uh, the minister advise what the purpose of that funding is and how uh, the ministry will be dividing it among schools, what the formula is or what the rationale is for uh, how that money will be distributed uh, this year? Uh, 
Minister. <coughs> Mr. Chair, um, as there's been a number of uh, communiques in terms of the, the ending of the uh, Canada-BC Immigration Agreement and the uh, seizing of funding uh, for ESL programs, uh, the federal government is in the process of negotiating agreements and negotiating locations, no negotiating the type of training. Uh, it was important for this ministry to make sure that no students fell through the gaps. And the, from that 10.5 million, we were able to divide that with 17 public institutions that deliver ESL programs. And it's divided based upon the number of students that each had in ESL programs. And there was an information uh, bulletin that was put out on February 19th. 2014, that we'd be happy to provide that to the member opposite that lists each institution and the exact amount that each received. Member Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, can the minister be very specific about the purpose of this funding? Is this for severance payments for staff? Uh, and if it is for students, what are the expectations of the ministry of the schools who receive it in terms of what's to be done with the money? What is the deliverable for schools who receive this money? Minister. Mr. Chair, I think it's more appropriate that I do emphasize that this uh, one-time uh, funding is not for severances and is not to be used for severances. It is to ensure the continuation of the programs. It's to establish pathways, Mr. Chair, for these students, uh, pathways that can help them segue from the current program to the yet to be determined method and manner of delivery of the federal program so no student falls through the cracks. So, Mr. Chair, this is, uh, this is entirely for students. Member Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd, I'd feel like uh, an echo here. Um, I'm wondering about the specific deliverable that will be expected of the schools who receive this funding. Is it a year's worth of education for the students who are currently in the program that they're going to finish their school year? Uh, is it that, uh, that um, they're going to be given a scholarship or something? To what, what are the schools intended to be using this money for? How will you know, uh, uh, how will the, uh, the minister know, Mr. Chair, if, uh, if the, the mission has been accomplished here and these students have been segued into uh, whatever it is the federal government has in mind. 
Minister. Mr. Chair, uh, as we must recognize that, that there are 17 different institutions that provide ESL, and each are very unique in terms of the number of students, the type of students, their level, their needs. So each institution is tasked with developing their own transition plan based upon their students, their needs, and what they need to segue into the, <coughs> the federal program when it gets announced. And it certainly depends on uh, whether or not that institution is going to receive any agreements uh, from the federal government. And I understand uh, that Camosun College uh, here on Vancouver Island is not in discussion with the government of Canada uh, in that, uh, so they're going to have to develop a transition plan based upon when the, after the announcement of the program, how their students can segue as seamless as possible to those programs. Uh, and uh, we expect uh, each of these universities and colleges and institutions to work with those service providers when they are announced, look at the programs, look at the locations, look at the depth and breadth of the program, and then use that funding as a pathway to those programs to make sure they are minimize the gaps. And, and I, I must also note that uh, I, um, I understand there are several public sector, uh, public sector universities, colleges, and or institutions that are now in discussions with the federal government uh, to try to re-attempt to attempt to get some of that uh, federal money for ESL. Member Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I hope uh, that, uh, that the member opposite is not suggesting that it somehow falls to the schools to be fighting for this federal funding. If anything, it's the minister's job to be fighting for our schools and fighting for this funding. And in fact, Mr. Chair, uh, that is very much a concern that the minister and his colleagues have been sending mixed messages that maybe they're working with the federal government on this uh, cut to ESL. Uh, maybe they're cooperating with them. Certainly that's the message from the federal government. Uh, and uh, I also hear, of course, from the minister, Mr. Chair, that he likes the system the way it is and would like to keep it, as would uh, this side of the House. Um, in any event, uh, it's very clear that this funding that's been set aside is not adequate for most schools in BC to run for a full year of educational programming. Douglas College, uh, they got 920000 from the province in transition. They uh, spend $1.6 million uh, to run their program uh, for a year, which means they're uh, uh, um, uh, short uh, in terms of being able to run for the entire year. BCC, their base is $8 million for ESL. They used to get $3.5 million from the province on chargeback for tuition. They need over $11 million to run the program for a year. So, Mr. Chair, given that this funding is coming from the federal government for transition, uh, can the minister advise that he will top up that funding to make sure in, on a school-by-school -school basis to make sure that these students are at least able to finish their academic year?
Minister. Mr. Chair, it's uh, more than appropriate for me as Minister to clarify details, and I know uh, disguise in the question were all sorts of suggestions of, of uh, conspiracy theories and collusion or otherwise. Let me clarify the facts. The Canada Immigration Agreement uh, between the Government of Canada and, and British Columbia uh, came to a, a cease. Uh, this ministry was of the view that this, the system as it was with uh, $17 million of federal uh, money through the Canada-BC Canada Agreement flowed through our universities to provide ESL to students that needed it. And, and I'm firm in that this ministry and myself were firm in the fact that this is the system that we believed in and what we wanted. Uh, despite our objections, the federal government agreed, uh, decided to, to offer a different service. Now, I think it's uh, the mature and professional things to do. Once a decision is made by the federal government, uh, we had no choice, of, however, to work with the federal government. Now, I must point out that the, that the ministry, in fact, did hire an individual to work with all the universities to help them write. Some universities may or may not have had the experience in, in obtaining these the grants from the federal government, did hire an individual to work ev with every single one of these institutions to assist them, if they required it, to bid for the new contract that's going to come out. And uh, that indeed happened. And we're going to continue to work with these states and to, to the institutions to, to support students. And, and we are committed to that, uh, Mr. Chair. Member Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm sure, uh, as the minister is sure, that the schools will be just fine uh, out of this. They're going to suffer the cut. Uh, they're going to, to lay off their faculty. Uh, the faculty, um, uh, it's heartbreaking, but will lose their jobs doing this incredibly important work. Um, and, and my question, though, was focused on the students. Um, is, uh, is the minister prepared to top up the federal grant to make sure that the students are able to finish their academic year um, out of out of this budget, uh, or is he not prepared to do that, Mr. Chair? 
Minister. Mr. Chair, it's, uh, it's important for our ministry to continue to work uh, very closely with institutions to ensure that students are not impacted. And, and all institutions are not the same. And there was some $10.5 million that were spread out to, uh, to 17 uh, public post-secondary institutions to make sure that there was transitional funding uh, while the, uh, the, the semantics and location and type of training from the federal government was worked out. We're going to continue to work through those institutions and we're going to determine if some of those institutions are successful or not in the federal process. So I'm not uh, prone to speculation in, in advance of that decision being made. Once that decision is made, we've determined which institutions are successful then we're better able to do a gap analysis and, and make an informed decision, not based on speculation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, can the minister advise what's happening to the provincial funding that uh, would have been used uh, before the program was cancelled to offset uh, student fees and tuition charges under the province's tuition-free ESL program? I understand this funding may have been called charge back for tuition. Uh, in any event, it was money that was provided by the province under a, a commitment that they made, which they are no longer committing to to provide tuition-free ESLs at colleges in British Columbia. Uh, where is that money going? What's happening to it? Minister? Mr. Chair, it's uh, important to note that beyond the federal reduction of uh, some $17 million, uh, we have not reduced institutions' budgets in that area and tuition uh, 
remains free in ESL still. Well, Mr. Chair, that's very, uh, it's very unusual news uh, in light of what's happening out there right now. Uh, Vancouver Community College anticipates going from 1,300 uh, full-time equivalent students, which is already a reduced number, to 300 uh, effective this summer. And those 300 are federally funded ELSA students. That means it is not available to Canadian citizens, permanent residents. Uh, it, is, it is only available to, uh, or pardon me, it's not available to Canadian citizens. It's only avail available to refugees and to uh, permanent residents. Um, and so I, I, I'm not sure uh, uh, how VCC is providing uh, uh, tuition-free domestic ESL. Uh, and, and similarly, for Kwantlen, uh, their website says if you're a domestic student, you can't even apply for uh, ESL. They're only accepting applications for international students. So uh, perhaps, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, um, well, not perhaps, definitely, uh, I hope the minister can provide some clarification about what is going to happen with that funding in light of a school like, for example, Kwantlen, where you cannot even apply to become a domestic ESL student. So how on earth could you get tuition-free ESL funded by the provincial government? Minister. Mr. Chair, I welcome the uh, member from uh, Burnaby Lohi to the House as well. Uh, Canada has indeed uh, changed the delivery of the ESL program and uh, CIC, uh, as we've heard, is uh, negotiating with community-based programming and some public post-secondary institutions and, and existing students will be served. Now the VCC numbers as, uh, as noted by the member opposite uh, certainly are not the same as the numbers that I have at my disposal.
And in relation to Kwantlen Polytechnic University, uh, the information that they put out uh, for public consumption was prior to the transition funding being available to them. And we're going to continue to work with uh, Kwantlen Polytechnic and the other affected institutions as they transition uh, from the previous model to the new model where the federal government is going to be providing ESL. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, uh, and that is exactly why we're here in this estimates process is to get the accurate number. So uh, could the minister please advise what is happening to developmental FTE targets for schools in light of the ESL cuts? And Mr. Chair, just as a point of clarification, um, can the minister provide specific numbers for uh, the schools that he mentioned, which he has numbers for, which is Kwantlen, um, and VCC. 
Minister. Mr. Chair, our province is indeed uh, committed to ensure adults in BC have the adult education opportunities to fulfill their education, employment, and life goals. And uh, it does recognize that, uh, that for many, many British Columbians, the first point of access post-secondary is training to developmental training through Adult Basic Education, AEB, or Second Language uh, ESL. And while we're still awaiting the outcome of the discussions that the institutions are having with CSC and those institutions in discussion with, with uh, CSC, their FTE numbers will not change. But let me provide some specifics as to the question. Uh, VCC has 3,048, 3,048 developmental positions, and Kwantlen Polytechnic University has 701 developmental positions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Then do I understand, uh, Mr. Chair, the member properly, that the FTE, the full-time equivalent student spaces at the schools affect that are losing federal funding to provide English as a second language training uh, will remain unchanged, but that the minister is thinking about changing those numbers depending on what the ultimate funding decision is by the federal government? Minister? Mr. Chair, there's always a short answer and a slightly longer than shorter answer. The short answer is yes, and uh, the longer is that uh, we're going to continue to monitor FTE rates. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I note that we're discussing the uh, fiscal year April 1st, uh, 2014 to March 31st, 2015, and this is uh, already, I can't believe it, but it's already March. Um, and uh, so schools uh, are being asked, if I understand properly, to plan uh, their year based on existing FTE targets without knowing what their funding is going to be uh, for that year. Um, uh, so Mr. Chair, uh, might I ask the Minister then, has he allocated some money in this budget uh, in the event that the federal government does uh, cut schools, as everybody expects, and people are being laid off, as is happening right now, um, it, will he allocate some money to provide these schools with business certainty that they will be able to keep the teachers, that they will be able to keep the, the placements for the students they admit for the coming school year um, if they're being asked to deliver on those same FTE targets? Minister? Mr. Chair, it's, uh, it's always good to find something in common, and uh, it, I think we both agree that it's unfortunate that the uh, federal government is taking so long to make these decisions. I had hoped that they had made these long ago, we would have made more certainty. That, uh, as mentioned previously, that $10.5 million that my ministry was able to give to those 17 aforementioned institutions uh, certainly helps to provide business continuity in this uh, period of uncertainty and in a transitional period. And we're certainly hoping that decision by the federal government is made sooner than later and we can have a, a proper analysis.